Well, I never realized that replacing the light bulb has turned into a major project. When I pulled the bezels off this, water was pouring out of there. And I still, these are, this is wet back here, and it's gonna, it's gonna get ruined. So what I gotta do is let this dry out, and then epoxy it really good to seal it, and then think about sealing this somehow. And then, on this side, this is a trick. This isn't leaking as much, but it's still a little bit damp. But these morons took the license plate light and just draped it over where the bezel goes. Now tell me how the hell that's not going to leak. I mean, that's ridiculous. This, I tell you, these RVs are built like crap. And there's just no two ways around it. It's just, they're just junk. And uh, just beware whenever you buy an RV that you're going to be doing this stuff because these things are built like... I mean, look at that. That is worse. That is not acceptable at all. And what makes it worse is these wires are pretty tight, so I can't pull them out and reroute them very easily. Well, here's a visual on actually how the wire was routed. Now this is a Heiko SB375 grommet. It's just a little piece of plastic and I'm going to drill a hole in here and feed the grommet in there as far as it'll go and then when I run the wires through there I'll silicone it to waterproof everything and hopefully if I measure right the grommet will exit somewhere on the back side here. This graphic shows how I improve the routing by going through the grommet. Okay so I drilled a hole here for this uh, bushing that will go in here. Now, anytime you drill through this kind of stuff with fiberglass, laminate, with wood behind it, and even all these screw holes here, it's a potential source of damage. In fact, in a boat, if you were to do this without putting some kind of a bedding compound on it when you put the screws in, you could do damage uh, to the hole from delamination. What you normally do with a boat is either use some bedding compound to put the screw in, which makes it more or less permanent, which really can't be done here because of the way these uh, just screw in. So the real correct way to do this is to drill out this hole larger and then fill it in with some fiberglass cloth and epoxy then when it's dry, drill a hole in again so it makes kind of like a boss. And then that way when you put the screw in, you're screwing into epoxy only and not into the wood. So I'm not sure I should do that on these, but that's going to take some time. And I think for now what I may do is just use some silicone uh, to seal these because silicone you can get out fairly easily. Now normally on a project like this, I would be using this West System uh, 105 epoxy, but for this one, I'm going to use just this Loctite stuff because it's five minute. This stuff takes uh, about 24 hours really in this type of weather. And uh, it's more for structural things. And since this really isn't structural, I think this faster epoxy will work okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mix up a small amount of epoxy and take a Q-tip and line the hole like that with epoxy. That way this will always be uh, impervious to any further water damage. So I, uh, coming in here, I epoxied that little bushing in place and then uh, ran the two wires through there. So now all I gotta do is connect them to uh, the uh, light cover and then I can button that up and that'll be a lot better solution. All right, we've now got everything connected, uh, heat shrinked and um, soldered on here. And then I'm going to push this back through. And once I get uh, as far as it'll go, I'm going to put a little dab of silicone on here. Now I'm using silicone because even though it'll seal it, it's not so much that you can't pull it through again uh, if you ever have to pull that out. So about there should be enough to give me enough leeway. So you can see the wires are no longer routed over this, they're routed inside this, which is the way it should have been. Epoxy will stain fiberglass, so 
take a couple minutes and put some blue tape around uh, the edges where you're going to apply the fiberglass so you don't get any uh, yellow stains on it. Well, when you're mixing the epoxy up, make sure and keep your caps, the top caps, separated so you don't put the wrong cap on. And this particular stuff is 50-50 here. Okay, I got some mixed up and we're just going to go over here and slobber it on. To be able to do this, you'll probably have to mix, um, mix the batch up a couple times. Well, this actually does take a little bit of effort to get this whited out. In some respects, it's kind of like trying to paint on, you know, molasses. Um, it just doesn't paint very well, but um, if you press a very, you're going to get it on here uh, and just get it all covered real nice and get it to the point where, when I mean wetted, every spot looks wet. If it looks like a dry spot, you haven't got it on there. Now, this is the other reason you use 5-minute epoxy, is because the long uh, drying stuff tend to, on a vertical surface, tend to migrate towards the bottom. And we want it to stay, you know, adhere to all the surfaces. So, uh, after this dries, then we'll pull the tape, and in the meantime, we we'll can look at the other one. And you can see the contrast where this one here is not wetted out. Now, I'll show you here that this is already, actually already starting to delaminate. Um, you can maybe see this as I... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that screwdriver in there and then I'm going to pour some epoxy in there and then pull it out. So we'll get epoxy sealed inside. Part of the reassembly is I want to clean up some of these holes because the uh, fiberglass has kind of been fractured there a little bit when they drilled the holes. And there's a trick to doing that. And uh, what you do is you just take a countersink bit but then you run it backwards instead of forwards. And when you do that, it does not further crack it. One way you can prevent this kind of cracking is when you're drilling a hole. If you run it backwards until you're through the fiberglass, then turn it forward, you won't crack them. And the next step is to create a little bridge here, that I, as I did to cover the uh, channel and just uh, with a little piece of fiberglass and put a couple screws in here. Now I'm going to just fill this void behind here and over the screw heads and in the front with some silicone, which will seal it, but it will allow me to get to it and pull it out if I ever need to. Well, granted, it may look sloppy, but it's effective. And more importantly, it's sealed. Well, I've decided for now to use this uh, pure silicone grease to help waterproof the uh, screw holes there. And what I did is I just filled some in a syringe here. And I'm just going to go along to each one of these. Just fill some in here. When I put the screws in, that will help waterproof the screw holes. I also bought some new gaskets from the uh, taillight lens manufacturer. And to install them, I'm actually going to have to cut them on the inside here and here so I can get them around and then on the old one I'll have to cut them here and here to get them off so I'll replace the gasket these gaskets here are real thin and pretty well wore out and then as a last step I'm going to take uh, some of that silicone and then just run a real small bead all the way around the back side of it and uh, hopefully that will just give me a little bit of extra sealing so now that I've got everything all nice and buttoned up, uh, it's time to do what we used to call in the Air Force uh, a smoke test. Okay, success. I've got the uh, emergency lights on and the um, uh, taillights. 